Can you uh, tell us about the decision to return to the Rams? Uh, did you somehow always think you'd be back, <laughs> if not this quickly? You know, it, this was too good to turn down. You know, in, ter in terms of coming back to this place uh, where my wife spent, you know, 12 years of her life prior, um, obviously being on staff for those previous three years and, and, and being a part of that Super Bowl run in 18 and, and some great teams, you know, moving forward. And um, it, it's just such a good place. And it's such an unbelievable organization with people that uh, truly care about obviously winning, but also uh, the culture. And, and that was something I was really interested in coming back to, to do was to learn and continue to learn from this culture and be a part of it. And obviously Matthew Stafford, and, and, you know, was obviously intriguing to be a part of. Uh, his development and his career. And um, it's just such a great place. Loved my time at Kentucky and in the SEC and college football again, but um, this opportunity was too good to pass up. Uh -huh. um, the, uh, I think you're the third uh, offensive coordinator in Sean's time, not including the couple of years when there wasn't one. Um, can you describe the role of an offensive coordinator under Sean? Uh, has it been different for each individual? What what specifically would you hope to bring? I think it's more so helping Sean manage time and, and within the offense, you know, side of the football. And, you know, he gets pulled in so many different directions at times throughout a week that, you know, helping, you know, work an install meeting, you know, really help him with the game plan, get things started early on in the week specifically. And then as you get into the you know specific aspects of game planning, red zone, third down, situational football, just helping, you know, being a hand with that and more so sometimes getting it started when he does get pulled in some different directions with his head coaching duties. But I think the position has probably remained pretty, uh, you know, consistent over the years since Matt LaFleur in, in 2017 here in LA. And um, it's just more so being a you know sounding board for Sean, giving ideas, and also being available uh, to help kind of work some you know, meetings and, and work with the players, maybe in his absence, uh, when he does get pulled in some different directions. Thank you. Thank you. Here. Oh, hey, Liam, nice to see you again. Good to um, see you. You know, um, obviously, Matt, uh, Kevin O'Connell, Zach Taylor, these guys that have been, you know, top offensive assistants and even Brandon Staley on the defensive side, um, have parlayed those opportunities uh, into becoming head coaches or they've, they've earned those opportunities. Uh, I think people on the outside are, you know, looking at you and going, okay, is, is this guy the next one? I, I'm just wondering how you kind of perceive that. If those opportunities come at some point, then, then great. You know, I mean, it, it's obviously the pinnacle of your career in, in terms of this profession is, is getting to be a head football coach in the National Football League. And um, to say that wasn't a goal of mine or isn't a goal of mine, I'd be lying, but um, that's not why, you know, ultimately you, you come take this job. I mean, I think that you, those are intriguing, you know, parts of it that can obviously happen if uh, the right situation unfolds. But um, this is more about getting, you know, back into an organization that truly cares about people. And, and I came to work every single day, um, truly caring about coming in here and loving what I was doing. Um, not that that didn't, wasn't the case at Kentucky, but just uh, th this was too good, like I've mentioned a few times. And um, I really want to learn again. You know, really, really had a lot of great experiences, learning from experience this past year. But to you know, Sean and, and this staff and this organization is, is just always adapting, always evolving. And that's something that I want to continue to be a part of and um, hopefully be able to learn, continue to learn from the likes of Cooper Cup and Matthew Stafford and those guys that, um, you know, just help with my football knowledge and in, in my career moving forward. Thanks very much. Thank you. Jordan. Hey, Liam, Jordan Rodriguez with The Athletic. Nice to talk to you. I covered you for a year, but it was all on Zoom. So um, it's nice to finally, I guess we're still on Zoom, but it's nice to talk to you. Um, just real quick before I get to my actual question, are you going to be up top in the booth or are you going to be coaching down on the field? Um, from our from our early conversations down on the on the sideline. Okay, thanks. And then, as you kind of underwent this process, um, you know, there was obviously bonds between yourself and your family and the coaching staff that's already in place. And uh, you know, we saw the the picture of you on the sideline and the playoffs and and all of that. So, 
what was that like as you started kind of really digging into what this taking this job or, or interviewing for this job could really mean? Maybe if you had to separate that part of it with maybe thinking about the big picture here for yourself. Yeah, that, that was definitely a, a difficult part of it. If there was one in terms of obviously um, running this, you know, being the offensive coordinator, calling plays in, in the SEC was really fun. You know, it was an, it was a really exciting time for me and my family. Lexington was amazing. Um, but when I did go down to the Tampa game, um, you know, obviously stayed in really close contact with some of the coaches and some of the players from, you know, previous years here, but just to feel the love when I did go back down to Tampa uh, for that game and um, just to see the camaraderie between the staff and the new guys, really, you know, great chemistry. Um, and, and just to have some of that, you know, love being felt from the staff, from the players, from the coaches, um, really felt like home again, you know, and, and that was, I uh, didn't have any idea of any of this kind of coming, you know, to fruition at that time. Um, but it was it was nice to kind of go back to that experience um, after a year away from this place to say, hey, this is home and this does feel like home and, and, and really a place that my wife felt like we could go back and have success as a family and, and have a seven month old son now, which is, um, you know, left with a completely different lifestyle and came back to to open arms, which was an amazing feeling. Thanks, Liam. Thank you. Taylor. Hey, Liam, uh, Kalen Jones from The Ringer. Um, obviously, you were over at Kentucky and you've had experience in the NFL, but I know you're only 36, but where is like the optimal coaching experience for someone, you know, who's in your position? You know, the coaching experience that I was able to gain um, in the SEC this past year was was invaluable. I mean, something that as much as I kind of looked at my first three years here, was like trying to go get my coaching PhD, you know, when was an assistant position coach under Sean and under this unbelievable staff and organization was able to go and, and kind of take that experience and knowledge and, and try to, you know, apply it to a different place in a different setting. And um, I do believe that we, we proved that it could work, you know, at that level of play. And um, there, there was definitely some differences in what we did versus kind of the things that, you know, made the Rams successful this past year, but that was what was exciting to be able to come back and, and try to gain that knowledge because I just know Sean, he's going to try to learn from everybody's experience and, and every single person that he meets and comes across, he's trying to learn from. So the coach that he was in 2020 when I was last year is not the same coach that he was at, or is now. And I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to try to continue to learn. So I think it's twofold is being able to kind of, get as much information as you, you may need at, at whatever aspect or part of your career that you're in and then going away and doing it on your own and seeing how it works and being able, you know, not afraid to fail and, and be in a position that it was a little bit on me if we were going to be successful or not. Our defense was very good. It always has been at Kentucky. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, we did have some success, which was a great validation that this system and the things that I had learned worked. Hey, we have Steve White uh, with the NFL Network. Uh, congratulations on the on the young baby, and you know, for sure, they're gonna be walking soon, man. The real parenting is about to come in, Liam. <laughs> Everybody's been saying the exact same thing. <laughs> so, hey, a, a couple things. You know, you just said Sean is not the same guy he was when you left in 2020. In what ways? You know, I think that any time that you really look at our 2018 season and, and we're rolling and we have a great year. And, and obviously we fell short in a game that I think that we learned a ton as a staff from, and as specifically Sean has mentioned a number of times, how much he's learned from that experience. Then you go to 2019 and have a little bit of a, you know, a down year for our expectations, right? Um, missed the playoff by a game, and, you know, and, and we had to kind of come back and do some research of who we are and, and try to, you know, really find ways to, to be more successful on offense and, and as a team, and then 2020 is a, is a crazy year for everybody, right? And um, I think that we we definitely achieved some goals in that year, obviously making it to the playoffs and doing some good things. But um, you could see their evolution from an offense all throughout the season, specifically, I think, in the drop back pass game. You know, you really just kind of see this offense start to evolve there, whereas Obviously, you know, we're trying to continue to marriage the run in the past and, and do all those different things. But 
Um, when, when you have the likes of Matthew Stafford and some of the guys that they were able to throw to and, and bring in an Odell and um, being able to protect the quarterback as they did this past season, specifically in the dropback game, um, you see this, this league is, is a passing league at the end of the day. And um, for that evolution to truly show in, in Sean's development as a coach and, and continuing to move forward as, a, as an offense, that was what was really exciting to be a part of again and to learn some of the different ways they were utilizing Matthew in the drop back game and some of the different tempos out of the huddle that was really, you know, helping out the offensive line and protections. I mean, there's so many different things that if you really look at this offense from 2021 to really 19 or 18, there are some differences. Obviously the, the base core foundation of this thing is the same, but the way it's kind of built now is, Hey, we got to be able to throw the football in this league, no matter what to win games. And, and secondly, Liam, just X's and O's and schemes and all that good stuff are one thing. But just, you know, the one thing we always heard about Sean is he can communicate with any individual, any position group, the team as a whole. Yeah. And, and from what you took from that to Kentucky now, coming back to, how much has it helped you? Because, you know, again, that's, that's a very difficult thing to communicate with everybody and to make them understand why and what you're doing. Totally. Um, th there was – it's also the communication aspect and the, and the caring of people aspect, right? So I, I remember being a young coach, 2018, being here in this building. And I mean, Sean, we, I just got hired maybe a few months prior and it was, you know, later on in an afternoon and Sean came by and just, I hadn't had a ton of dialogue with him since being hired, right? I'm assistant receivers coach. And he came by and just said, hey man, you know, love what you're doing. Truly appreciate what we're doing on a daily basis, man. And I'm like, yeah, you just didn't, don't hear that that often in this profession. Um, the things that you're expected to do are typically expected, and you don't really get a ton of pat on the backs. Um, Sean kind of flips that whole narrative on its head and truly appreciates people the way he communicates with his staff, with his players, with you know the, the chefs here, with the security. I mean, he knows all these people, everybody's names. He expects the building to be the same. And um, I think that helped with being able to go back to college and communicate with guys differently, right? It, it wasn't always this level of dialogue and communication. It's like, hey, how can we do this thing together in the best way to be successful? And a lot of the times being able to put the players in a position to have their own kind of philosophy on things, the buy-in's different. Um, all the ways that Sean communicates with other people on a day-to-day -day basis, not just the staff or players, really makes you have a different you know, respect for how to communicate with people in general. Uh, Beecham. Hey, Liam, Greg Beecham with the Associated Press. Thanks for doing this. No doubt. Uh, you kind of just covered what I was going to ask you about in terms of what you saw that the Rams did last year in your absence that had evolved the team with the drop back passing game, specifically Matthew Stafford. I was curious in general, how much attention did you pay to the Rams last year? Were you able to check into them on a week to week basis? Because that's, that was your life for three years. But then I assume you had more time after the Kentucky season was over. But how much attention did you pay? So typically, um, you know, if I had a chance to watch the game based on, you know, the, the TV aspect, I'd try to catch the game on any sort of Sunday as we were kind of finalizing, you know, the previous day's game and going through that process. But the NFL film would get put into our system by Wednesday. And that's the first thing I was doing on Wednesday morning, you know, was coming in and watching Rams film. And it, it was more so because we, we would cut that film up and show it to our players in a Friday meeting every week. And it wasn't always about the plays, right? I mean, we, we, we ran a lot of the same concepts, even though the Rams started to evolve in a different way. It was the fundamentals, the techniques, um, the things that really ultimately help college football players get better off of NFL film. It's not about the plays. Everybody runs very similar plays. It's about how these plays are being executed. What are some maybe some little different tips and tells that uh, Cooper Cup's doing in some subtleties in, you know, route running or Matthew's footwork or Whitworth's pass set or Higby's, you know, blocking technique on the, on the front side of zone. Those are the things that we would cut up and show our players every Friday, you know, in, in a meeting that was kind of all encompassing as, as to what we were doing from a game plan specific aspect for our next opponent. And then we would do a little fun Rams kind of, you know, highlight reel. Uh, regarding, you know, fundamentals and techniques of, of moving forward and playing the game the way we wanted it to be played. 
Cooper Cup was a really good receiver when you were here. Last year, he became the best receiver in football by any statistical measure. Did you see that coming? What did you think of it? And what did you, what were you, what, what do you see going forward from what he did last year? Well, I, I pushed extremely hard to have my son be named Cooper for a reason. <laughs> and um, I, I got shut out, but I, I was promised maybe the second one we can go with Cooper. So um, the, the, I learned so much from him and, and really, uh, I've told this to multiple players that I coached at Kentucky was I learned so much more from him than he probably ever learned from me at that time. Um, and, and, you know, maybe uh, was able to take the things that I learned from Cooper and be able to take it to Wondell Robinson at Kentucky and, and to some of those guys that um, it, it wasn't just his, the way he ran routes. I mean, that's always been a given for Cooper was his ability to move in short spaces, be an unbelievable body control quarterback friendly when you throw him the football. I mean, I threw to him every single day for two years and it was really hard to find incompletions throwing him the ball. Um, it was his preparation, the work ethic, uh, the way he competed and practiced, um, the way he would come in on Tuesday or Wednesday and say, hey, look guys, I'm seeing this from this coverage or from this player's leverage or technique. I think I can t attack it in a certain different way as opposed to maybe how we were used to doing it. Um, he really brought clarity to the fact that players really need flexibility, you know, to play at a high level, especially the way he plays this game. And I think that the more buy-in and, and kind of ownership that he has over the position and really our whole offense, he understands all 11, which is unbelievably unique for that position to be able to do. And um, he expanded my football knowledge as a coach in my short time working with him and uh, so to be the surprise that he had that kind of breakout year or really the productive year that he had, not at all. Thanks, Liam. Thank you. All right, we got four more. Go ahead, Kurt. Hey, Liam. Great to have you back. Uh, Kurt Sandoval, ABC7. Pretty fascinating what you were talking about on Wednesday cut-ups at Kentucky with Rams stuff. At the very beginning, you talked about Matthew Stafford. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you could give us a little bit deeper on what you were seeing, what you see now and how that's opened up your mind, this offense. Yeah, I mean, you know, when I was still here in Los Angeles, you know, we're obviously always, you know, studying around the league, right? And, and trying to find different ways, specifically in the off season, how to get better, maybe new concepts, or you're studying players around the league. And I remember as I was, you know, kind of getting ready to go to Kentucky, we were just, and I was just buzzing some Detroit film. and. Like, man, this was well before any Stafford talk had ever been brought up. And I'm like, man, this guy's playing at a super high level right now. Um, the game within the game. I think if you really talk about Matthew's unique trait, besides being extremely talented throwing the football, is understanding and playing the game within the game. And, and, and that's, you know, everybody looks at the, the no looks and those things as being really cool and flashy. That's not why he's doing it. He's doing it because he truly understands how to manipulate coverage and understand that the way he can use his eyes and use his body to adjust defenders, that's truly understanding the game within the game. Um, I think it's a complete unique trait that he, he has as a player. And um, I'm really excited to dive into that narrative with him in terms of, okay, how, how do you know he's doing this? How do you know that when you work your eyes this way, you're going to be able to grab the defender in, in a certain way. Um, you know, those are the things that I've heard about him. And But when you watch the film, um, it's, it's the only way you can truly understand it and describe the way he plays the game is exactly how you'd want your quarterback to play the game. Yes, do we need to take care of the football a little bit better? Absolutely. But the way he plays the game is what you want from your quarterback. And I think that the way he communicates and, and, and the things that I've heard of him as a leader – is exactly what I want to be around, and I'm excited to work with them. So what is your son's name, if we may ask? Jackson. All right. Thank you. Appreciate Welcome it. back. Thank you. Maria? Hey, Liam. Maria Soraya with RPV TV. Welcome back to the Rams. Thank you. You kind of talked about, you touched upon Sean's differences over the years. As a coach, what would you say your biggest differences are coming back in the second time around? It's, um, that's a great question. You know, even just sitting in these draft meetings here over the last few days, um, it's getting back to truly 
um, football. I mean, you're in every single meeting that you can walk into or anybody's office at any given time here in the building on any day and learn something. And um, that, that was something that not to say that that wasn't the case at Kentucky, but you just get pulled in a lot of different directions in the college football landscape right now with recruiting and compliance and academics. And um, th that's something that I was really refreshing to walk back in the building and, and learn on a day-to-day -day basis from any position coach, offense, defense, special teams, it's all ball. And um, really just hearing Sean and, and Les over the last couple of days in the draft meetings, just the way that they evaluate players, it's just a, it's just different from the college game, right? And, and there's some things that you can uh, justify versus, you know, college versus NFL and how players move and their movement skills, but really more so taking into the mental aspect of it, the deep dive that is sometimes hard to do in terms of the evaluation process in the college game. When you're going talking to high school kids, it's, it's different. You get a little bit more of an appreciation truly for the evaluation process here and the Rams way, really the Rams process was, was kind of the things that I've been really interested and intrigued by the last few weeks being back here. Thank you. Thank you. Jordan and Omar. Hey Liam, thanks for the follow-up. Um, yes. Just wondered, I mean, you kind of have a unique experience that you're bringing back with you after a year in college, especially this time of year, as you guys are in draft meetings, because you haven't just been scouting or evaluating these guys. You've been game planning against some of them as well. So I'm wondering if you could get into, I know you can't give everything away, obviously, but if you can get into a little bit more specifics of what insight is uh, valued from you by Sean and Les um, and you specifically and the offensive staff uh, assistant coaches as you guys get into these meetings. Yeah, I think it's very similar to like when Thomas Brown came, you know, came back here, you know, a couple of years ago from South Carolina, being in Georgia and Miami and his experiences at a high level of college football. You know, the last time I was here, I was at Maine. So there wasn't a ton of questions being asked of me about the uh, CAA and players that we were being scouted. And, and <laughs> But now, obviously, being in the SEC this past year and, and competing against arguably the best players in college football, um, there are some, you know, some legitimate questions that are being asked in terms of just the players, right, the landscape of the league, um, you know, how these kids can tick in terms of, uh, the SEC and, and the recruiting, the NIL, like how much does that go into uh, players, you know, background and things like that that they're interested in. I think there's a little bit more knowledge that I've obviously been able to gain by being in this league and competing against the likes of Georgia and Tennessee and some of those really, you know, top pro premier programs in the SEC. Um, didn't play against Alabama this past year, but um, you know, there's always carryover film too, right? So I was able to watch a ton of Alabama film just with crossover games. So there, there is experiences that can kind of go back on from this past year of evaluating film and watching tape and being able to see guys that we either played against or didn't and maybe give a little bit of insight as, as to maybe, you know, how I saw them or how we prepared for them. Maybe the, you know, after action report, what did we think of them after we played them? Um, you know, those are definitely things that I think have been, you know, helpful and some insight, but uh, at the end of the day, these guys have done a great job evaluating talent. I'm not sure how much more help they need from me. Thanks, Liam. Thank you. Well, Mark, hey, hey, Liam, congrats again, and, and welcome back to LA. Thank you. You, you went uh, in great specific detail on how the offense had evolved and, and your observations of that. I'm curious, when you first got back, did it seem like, whoa, you know, what, what a different looking offense from when you had just left it? Or maybe did those Wednesday film breakdowns help lessen that learning curve? Or what was your initial impression upon, you know, that in your now specific role? Thanks, Omar. I think what you hit, you know, in the second part of your question was I was able to sort of keep up on the trend of where they were headed all throughout the season. Now, there was some weeks that I didn't maybe do as much of a deep dive just based on the game plan that we were kind of presenting to our players that week and how much I could actually dive into it. But you really started to see the evolution of the gun run, you know, really early on, especially in the beginning of the season. And then the drop back pass was, was kind of ever, you know, evolving. And then you started to see when they hit that little bit of that lull there for a few, few games there, them truly get back to running the football and getting a little bit more of that identity back until they kind of, really come you know sat hunkered in in terms of 
getting, all right, this is who we are. This is what we need to do to be successful moving forward. And credit them for, you know, credit these guys to be able to kind of say, hey, this is who we are. We need to throw the football to win at the end of the day and put the ball in our best players' hands. And that's not a knock on the run game. It's not a knock on the running backs. But uh, Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup, those guys be able to put the ball in their hands, protect them as they did in the last half of the season was unbelievable. Um, so to answer your question in a shorter way is that I think being able to keep up with it throughout the season really helped me be able to walk into this building and understand more so what they were doing and some of the dialogue I was able to have with the coaching staff throughout the season and bounce ideas off of them. You know, I would see something on film on those Wednesday, you know, film reviews and I would text Zach Robinson and be like, Hey, what are you guys doing here? And, you know, he's one of my best friends. So I was able to have dialogue there and, and, and be able to get some answers, which helped me as a coach you know, be able to present that to my play to the players at Kentucky in a better way. So, um, you know, to be answer your question, it was easier to, to do being able to watch the film throughout the season for sure and have a base knowledge as to what the you know foundation was, which helped. Hey, one more quick one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead, Omar. Uh, you know, you mentioned how Sean communicates to everyone in the building and, you know, no, no matter who, what role they have, I'm just uh, wondering about the coaching staff specifically, because obviously over the years, he's had a lot of coaches be promoted and a turnover in the coaching staff, but it seems like everyone's always on the same page every year. Kind of what specifically does he communicate with the coaching staff to make that happen and, and try to, you know, make you guys a cohesive unit uh, despite the turnover there? No, I think, you know, one of Sean's, you know, base foundation philosophies is, you know, clear, open, honest communication. And I think that it just starts with your role, um, starts with your job responsibilities, having that meeting and being able to understand truly what you're supposed to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and then, you know, the vision, you know, for you. I mean, at the end of the day, um, I remember interviewing back in 2017, almost 18, and I was interviewing for the assistant receiver's position, and he asked a pretty detailed question about pass protection and how to pick something up. And I stood up there on the board for a couple of seconds, and I'm like, I have no idea. I've never <laughs> seen this before. And he's like, hey, dude, I'm just trying to we're, – we're trying to figure it out as a staff right now. And I was just trying to figure out – see if you, you know, can give us any help or input on it. So he was – his whole thought process when he interviews coaches – uh, and hires you is, is to hopefully be able to, you know, move up and evolve. And, and, and if he doesn't see you as potentially being somebody that can do that, I'm not sure he's going to be able to go that route. And it's nice to know as a coach, when you are in this building and you are hired by Sean and the Rams that, you know, ultimately uh, you want to try to be able to grow and, 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 and move within the organization or have an opportunity to move without and, and, and be able to go try different things. So, it's a place that allows, you know, the freedom to be able to communicate as a staff. He makes that the, the way it is here. Les, you know, Kevin, they all do such an amazing job of saying, hey, you know, feel free to fail. And, and that's something that I think as a football coach, it's really difficult at times when you walk into a new place to feel like you can't go coach and be yourself. And that's not the case here.